Look at verse 29. In verse 29, as for thee, O king, thy thoughts came into thy mind upon thy bed. Now, Daniel is revealing even the thoughts that Nebuchadnezzar had. Before the dream came, he said, uh, Nebuchadnezzar, you must remember, when you were to sleep, you were thinking in your heart, what shall be after you have left? Because we are going to leave. Although the magicians and astrologers, the same king, live forever, you and I know that you are going to depart. And the, the thought came to your mind, what shall come to pass hereafter? And he that revealeth secrets maketh known to thee. What shall come to pass? In verse 30, in verse 30, he tells us, But as for me, this secret is not revealed to me. For any wisdom that I have more than any living, but for their sakes that shall make known the interpretation to the king, and that thou mightest know the thoughts of your heart. He said, that's the reason why. Now, the confidence that Daniel had, the declaration that Daniel made fearlessly, courageously, without being afraid of Nebuchadnezzar, of Ariok, of any other uh, uh, Chaldean. That's the kind of courage he wants us to have. That's the kind of mind he wants us to have when he sends us to declare what will come upon people now and also in the future. Jeremiah chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 7. Jeremiah chapter 1. Reading from verse 7. But... The Lord said unto me, unto me, Jeremiah, and unto you as well. The Lord said unto me, say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Then in verse 8, it tells us in verse 8, be not afraid of their faces because you think their faces show their mind their faces reflect the thoughts they have their faces will show you what they are planning what they are thinking and if they are going to hurt you or harm you you'll see it on their faces except they train themselves not to show it on their face and so uh, uh, jeremiah don't be afraid do not be afraid of their faces for i am with thee to deliver thee says the lord in verse 9 it says then the lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth and the lord said unto me behold i have put my words in thy mouth and then in verse 10 it says see i have this day said thee over the nations and over the kingdoms and to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down and to build and to plant. He doesn't want us to be, you know, shivering and shaking and timid and fearful and frightened before the people he sends us to. God loves them. And he sends us a message of love that will save their soul, that will deliver them from eternal death, that they will not perish. And if you carry such a wonderful message, a life-saving message, a soul-saving message, and you love the people you are speaking to, then you and God has assured you that he is sending you. He put his word in your mouth. You will not be afraid in Jesus' name. I will not be afraid in Jesus' name. We're looking at 1 Timothy chapter 4, and we're reading from verse 1. 1 Timothy chapter 4, reading from verse 1. It says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirit and doctrines of devils. Look at verse 6. Even in that situation, in verse 6, it says, If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou 
shall be a good minister when you put the people in remembrance. This is what God has said. This is what is happening now. Everything is according to his word. This is prophecy being fulfilled. And you remind them that Christ is about to come. And everyone that is not saved or backsliding shall come back and be saved. And everyone that is saved and is not a living a consistent holy life and without holiness no man shall save the Lord. You encourage them and you pray with them and you counsel them that whatever challenges in their lives not making them to show that consistent life of Christian faith and salvation you root that out of their lives and you lead them to real repentance and restoration and you lead them to that sanctification that without holiness no man shall save the Lord and then you let them seek the power of God that will strengthen them, embolden them, encourage them, empower them. That's what the Lord is calling us to. And we do that without any fear. And we do that without, uh, you know, shaking or uh, whatever before anyone. It says you put the brethren in remembrance of this thing. Thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast ordained, uh, attained. It says in verse 16, uh, in verse 16, take heed unto thyself. Don't be timid. Take heed unto thyself. Live courageously. Live with conviction and live without compromise. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Amen. Look at number three here. Number three now, we're looking at the uh, firm decree of the most foremost wise king. That's God. We're talking about God is foremost, is the highest, is eternal, and is uh, when one kingdom passes away, he still remains there. And when one king dies, and changes and God changes him and he setteth up another God is still there and when one powerful emperor powerful man powerful king when he's deposed when he is pushed aside another one comes God is still there. the same God at the time of uh, Pharaoh the same God at the time of the Assyrian king Sennacherib at the same God at the time of Nebuchadnezzar the same God at the time of Herod is still the same God on the throne they come they go they come they perish they come they are dethroned. They come, they're driven away, but God remains the same. He is the foremost wise God, and He has His own decree too. And when He makes His own decree, the decree of the eternal God will stand. We're looking at uh, Daniel chapter 2, and we're reading from verse 30. Daniel chapter 2, verse 30. But as for me, this secret is not revealed to me for any wisdom that I have more than any living. But for their sakes that shall make known the interpretation to the king that thou mightest know the thoughts of thine heart. In Daniel chapter 4, we're looking at verse 17. Daniel chapter 4. Verse 17, it says in verse 17, it tells us this matter is by the decree of the watches, of the watchers, and that and the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the most high, the most high. God in heaven ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth aid to whomsoever he will. You see that? The God of heaven, the most high, ruleth in the kingdoms of men and he giveth the kingdoms to whomsoever he will and setteth over each 
Even the people like look like the basest of men. Look at verse 24. In verse 24, it says, This is the interpretation, O king, and this is the decree of the Most High, which is come upon my Lord the King. God is the one that rules. And whoever he puts there is still in charge. And he has a decree that supersedes, that goes beyond the decree of any man. In Proverbs chapter 8, reading from verse 29. Proverbs chapter 8, and we're reading from verse 29. When he gave to the sea, here is Christ talking, and he said, when the Father the Almighty, the ancient of days, when he gave to the sea his decree that the waters should not pass his commandment. When he appointed the foundations of the earth, then in verse 30 he says, Then I was by him. And then he says, As one brought up with him and I was daily his delight rejoicing always before him Psalm 2 we're looking at verse 6 in Psalm 2 looking at verse 6 it says yet I have set my king upon my holy hill of Zion that's the almighty saying he has the final say he has the final word about the dominions and the kingdoms of this world. And he says, I sent my, I set my king. That's his only begotten son. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. Look at verse 7. It says in verse 7, I will declare the decree. He has the final decree on any life, on any king, on any community on any nation he has the final decree upon the kingdoms of this world Nebuchadnezzar does not did not have the final decree there is another decree the decree of the almighty god that supersedes every other decree on earth i will declare the decree the lord have said unto me Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And then in verse 8, in verse 8 it says, Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen, the Gentiles, for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Then in verse 9, in verse 9 he said, Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron, because all judgment has been given to the hand of the Son of God, and shall dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. And then in verse 10, he said, Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings, be wise now, O ye emperors. Be wise now, O ye rulers. Because there is one that is higher than the highest. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings. Be instructed, ye judges of the earth. And then in verse 11, in verse 11, serve the Lord with fear that he is your fear. If you don't come to the Lord and seek the Lord, now, if you perish, if you die in a condition of your sinfulness, even though you are a king, even though you are an emperor, even though you are a ruler, where will you spend eternity? Serve the Lord. Come and repent. Come and seek the Lord and have salvation and remain and abide in that grace of God in salvation. It says, serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. And then in verse 12, it says, kiss the son, befriend the son, make him your friend, and let all the wall of demarcation between you and the son, the savior, your substitute, and the redeemer. Let everything, the wall of demarcation be broken down and befriend him. Let him say, you are my friend because I have called you, I have chosen you, and I have washed your sin, and I have made you a new creature now in Christ. Kiss the son, lest he be angry, and ye perish from the way when his wrath is kindled, but a little. 
blessed are all they that put their trust in him. Amen. Amen. You put your trust in him, in Christ, the son of God, to be your savior. You put your trust in him so that he can be your sanctifier. You put your trust in him so that he can empower you. And that power will make you to stand. And then you'll be witnesses unto him in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the uttermost part of the earth. And his nature will come into you. And because his nature comes into you, you will live the life that glorifies God the life that when time is ended here for you, for us, and for the world in the rapture, the resurrection, you'll go with the Lord in Jesus' name. Let's rise up now and talk to the Lord in prayer. Let's stand up, talk to the Lord in prayer, and forget every other thing around you. And forget, you know, whatever it is, anything there, anything there. Forget everything and call upon the name of the Lord. We've learned so much today. And we need to take all that to the Lord so that His strength will be in us, His power will be in us, and the assurance and the fearlessness and the courage and the conviction will be in us. Look at Daniel. Why can't you be another Daniel today? Talk to the Lord in prayer and say, oh Lord, here am I. I have heard about the unforgettable Daniel. I want to so live my life that I too, by the grace of God in the strength of the Lord and with the real salvation I have, I will live an unforgettable life. It starts with salvation. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord and say, Lord, here I am. That same change you made in Daniel and that same transformation you made in Daniel and that same courage you gave Daniel and that same conviction you gave Daniel, I want to so live the life that I'll fear nothing on earth and even the Kadnesah with a frown, with his fury and uh, with his uh, fire and fiery nature. Lord, give me the heart that will live for you unforgettable, unforgettable anywhere that I find myself in my community I'll so have the truth penetrating my life saturating my life and keeping me to stand firm on the truth, tell the Lord tell the Lord and tell him oh Lord here am I pray a decisive prayer a decisive prayer between you and the Lord telling the Lord oh Lord I want to have that kind of life that is firm fearless focused living for your glory tell him and he will do it in your life that your life to your neighbors your life to your community your life anywhere everywhere will be unforgettable They'll know you are a child of God. They'll know you have the grace of God in you. They'll know that that grace of God in you teaches you to deny ungodliness and to deny all worldly lusts and then to live a righteous life, a godly life, a sober life. Tell the Lord, let the light of the gospel so shine in your life that everyone around you beholding you will know you have been of the Lord Jesus. That you are a new creature in Christ. That old things have passed away. And that all things have become new. And if you have friends, prayer partners, let them be people of this like precious faith. Let them be people who are not pretenders who are not hypocrites. Let them be people who love the Lord like you love the Lord, who are committed to the Lord like you are committed to the Lord, who are consecrated to the Lord completely with all their heart, all their soul, and all their mind. Let them be people who have the same understanding and the same deep commitment as you have unto the Lord. Let us say how Daniel surrounded himself with people of like precious faith who are your friends are they people that easily give up they can't endure a little persecution they can't endure a little trial they can't endure a passing decree 
and they are shaking and they, can't, they don't have the same faith you have in the promises of God. Are those your friends? Why don't you say, Lord, help me. Give me friends that have the same like precious faith. Friends that will stand where we ought to stand on the promises of God. Friends that have more of heaven than the earth in their lives. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord that you'll be able to have the common faith when you make petition before the Lord and then you pray with confidence any challenge two of you shall agree together with confidence any problem common problem you're trying to solve and you pray with confidence confidence in the Lord that I know I know I know that God will answer and you have common confidence the same confidence in the promises of God that while they are yet speaking I will answer and before they finish making their petition I give them the solution and you have that confidence yourself and then you surround yourself with the people that have the same the same confidence the people that have a different doctrine, a different interpretation, a different lifestyle, a backsliding lifestyle, a compromising lifestyle. No, the people that hold on to this world and they say, come watch me. Here is where I stand and I stand with you. <clears throat> They stand with you, tell the Lord. And when God answers prayer, then you come with praise. Praise before the perpetual praise. You're always praising the Lord. You're never grumbling, never complaining. Why did God bring me to this situation? Morning, noon, and night. You are praising the Lord. The answer has come. You are praising the Lord. The Jericho walls are still up. You are praising the Lord. The night in the dungeon, midnight, with Paul and Silas, you are praising the Lord. And it's the praise of God in your mouth, perpetually, that will grant you that miraculous answer that you are seeking. Present time, praise the Lord. Hold up, praise the Lord. Traffic jam, praise the Lord. On the long queue, sweating in your car, praising the Lord. At all times, in all things, at all places, in every situation, when the people of the world are talking negative and they're talking divergent things, you have your mouth filled with the praises of the Lord. Personal, personal praise. Personal praise. Praising the Lord in a personal way. That man said, seven days, seven times in the day, will I praise your name and pray unto you. Every other hour, just remember the Lord. He is in charge. He is in charge. He is in charge. Nebuchadnezzar not taking the power away from the most high God. God is still in charge. Praise him all the time. And when you are before the people of this world, the fearless, bold, courageous. Don't think of man more than you think of God. Think of God. Meditate on God. Lean on God. Rely on God. Whatever is happening, if that thing is not of God, it will soon pass away. Any decree, 
for many earthly king, nothing will pass away. It's the decree of the king of kings, the decree of the lord of lords that will stand forever and ever. Don't be afraid of any situation caused by man, planned by man, affected by man. He is man. She is just a woman. The king of heaven that has the final decree. And that final decree says you will live. That final decree says no man shall lay any hand on you to hurt you. That final decree, the decree of God says he'll give you a long life until you finish the calling he has given you. The decree of the foremost wise king is wise he knows what you need he knows the direction of your life he knows the calling upon your life and has made a decree for the son his only begotten son and for you son of God daughter of God He'll do good in your life. Think of that. Meditate on that. He will see you through. Daniel lived all the days of Nebuchadnezzar. He lived beyond the days of Nebuchadnezzar. He lived beyond the days of Belshazzar. He lived beyond the days of the Middle Persian Empire. He lived, he lived, he lived. And all through his life, no fear, no timidity, no shaking, no compromise, and the grace of God preserved him until he finished what God called him to do. He's gone. You are here. The Lord will see you through. Amen. <clears throat> In Jesus' name we pray. Can I tell you that the Lord has answered your prayer? That everything you have been afraid of and your heart was beating for, the problem is solved. The secret that perplexed you as you go back home, the Lord himself will reveal that secret. Your life or believe straightforward, courageously, lovingly, confidently. You are not rude to anybody, and you are not cruel to anybody, and nobody will be rude or cruel to you in Jesus' name. Raise up your hand, please. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for what you did for Daniel in particular, for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and for that team. And he came to the king, and the king then dropped all his threats. He was going to kill everybody. Lord, we pray you will use your sons and your daughters in the service today here all over the nation, all over the continent, all over the world. Do something special with every brother, every sister in Jesus' name. All the evil decree that other people, other kings or presidents or whatever, leaders of the world that they are bringing up that will ruin, that will destroy, that will slay the lives of people, use your sons here. Use your daughters here. Use your sons everywhere and your daughters. 
bring them to the position that they will crush and destroy all evil decrees in Jesus' name. Now, Lord, we're just getting to know some good new revelations. And Lord, now that we have this revelation, which we didn't have in the past, concerning our personal lives and concerning your church and concerning the believers everywhere, Lord, spare our lives. Prolong our lives so that all that we are getting to know now, we will make use of them profitably in our communities everywhere in Jesus' name. Let the joy of the Lord be the strength of your people. Let the knowledge of the Almighty strengthen us from within in Jesus' name. Lord, you know us, we know ourselves in the past. We have been timid, we have been fearful, we have been doubtful, we have been anxious. But now, from this present time, let the power of God make us steady. The strength of God energize us in Jesus' name. And Lord, no more fear. No more fear of the devil. No more fear of evil spirits. No more fear of any man. No more fear of any woman. No more fear of any decree of man in our lives in Jesus' name. Lord, strengthen your people. Energize your people. Empower your people. And help us to have our eyes open so that we look straight ahead and nothing will divert us in Jesus' name. Power for everyone. Strength for everyone. Vision for everyone. Stability of life for everyone. And Lord, by your special, special gift, long life for everyone. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. It started as a mustard seed, growing beyond the mountain creed. It's an astonishing movement indeed. Men receiving astonishing miracles. Women reunited with a joy they once lost. Youths revived and good to go. And children blessed beyond measure. Bill, no shantai. Il no fera sokila promise. He will do everything he has promised in Jesus name Glaro Seigneur yes it's true your personal gift from a loving father is loading from Africa's west coast this is abundant life through Christ live from the peaceful land of Lome Togo West Africa 16 to 21 February 2023 1600 hours GMT daily our father in the faith uniting people to God the Kavena of GCK pastor Dr. W.F. Kumui Ilofera. That means he will do it. Featuring Spirit-Filled Ministers and Professionals Conference, Super Scintillating Impact Academy for Youth, Young Professionals and Young Adults, with Special Guest Music Ministration by Luke Ingra, GCK to the world, their satellite, and all our social media platforms. GCK, it's the gospel to every creature. Join us. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. 
when the people have responded and they have said yes to the Lord, no to Satan. They have turned around, forsaking their sins and embracing the Lord Jesus Christ. We say that they are converted by grace through faith. They are holding on to the Lord as the person that will take them out of darkness into light, out of their sin into what you may call holiness or righteousness or saintlyhood, out of what they were into what God wants them to be. Now, at that time when they are just converted or born again, the Bible calls them new babes or new believers in the Lord. It is the work of follow-up that makes the preacher or the soul winner or the evangelist or the matured Christians or the people that God used to bring these converts to the Lord is the work of the soul winner that makes such a person to now teach them step by step. Teach them precept upon precept. Teach them a little at a time, one here, another one there, to establish these converts, to confirm these converts, to make them to know where they stand, what they stand upon, so that they will not be swayed here and there, tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. That's what we call follow-up. The preaching of the gospel, that's evangelism. When these people are converted, taking care of them, nurturing them, helping them, developing them, teaching them, that's what we call the follow-up. And in the Bible, you have the connection, the combination, that the evangelism is there, and then the follow-up is there. When you are reaching out after the people are converted, your work is not finished. You must still follow on. Effective evangelism involves having a right passion directed towards the right priority by the right people who take the right precautions to make the right presentation in the right place. That's how you are effective. Acts chapter 15, verse 36. And some days after, Paul said unto Barnabas, Let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do. Paul brought the idea out and said, Barnabas, we've sat back long time enough. Now we have preached the gospel in all those places as the Spirit of the Lord has directed us. Why not let us go again? That means they are gone before. They went in the first missionary journey, but now to do follow-up. Let us go again and visit. In the Greek, the word visit means and examine and see and diligently consider how our brethren in every city where we have gone before how they are now doing. So let us go and see. This was very commonly expressed in the life of Paul the Apostle. Because, you know, it's not just a one-sided life of talking to God and talking to God and talking to God alone. Go and talk to the sinners. Go and talk to the new converts. Go and talk to the people you need to follow up. If you're a real child of God and you take the commandment of the Lord Jesus Christ very seriously, that passion will be in you. The New Testament ministers were always attentive to the leading of the Holy Spirit so that the Holy Spirit would direct them to where ministration was needed at the time. The Lord wants us to be obedient. Take the gospel to the regions beyond. Start in your community. Tell them of the good news of salvation. And as you do, when they are getting saved, you follow them all. If you're a visitation worker, you be, be very serious about your visitation and the follow-up. Make sure that you have the passion. Whether you're a worker or you're not a worker, the great company, the members of the church, great was the company of those that published it. We are going to tell the Lord that we are committing ourselves to this call to evangelism and follow-up. As you have come this evening, you must make a personal commitment. I am giving myself to follow up and evangelism. I will not forget this subject. 
pray and make a commitment before the Lord. It is not something you will hear and go away without any, any commitment. You have to make a commitment before the Lord. I am going to be a part of this great move. O oh Lord, revive my evangelism life. O oh Lord, revive my, my, my follow-up life. O oh Lord, help me to see the urgent need to go out there, to preach the gospel, to go out there, to follow up those who have been born again into the kingdom of God. And the Lord will help you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Can I hear you say amen again? We are going to pray. And we are going to make a further commitment. That we are going out particularly for these souls that have been won into the kingdom of God. We have heard about the follow up. We are going to pray and say God help me as I arise and go for this follow up. It will be a follow up indeed. These souls will be established in the kingdom of God. And as we pray they will be established in Jesus name. The GCK souls they will be established. Those that we are preaching to on a daily basis, they will be established. God will help us, use you, use me, use all of us to be instruments and materials to bring these souls to be established into the kingdom of God. Let's pray and call upon the name of the Lord that God will help us and the Lord will help us. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us say amen. If you agree with me, say amen. Now there are some things you need if you are going to be a follow-up evangelist indeed. Number one, you need grace. Number two, you need courage. Number three, you need wisdom. Number four, you need love. Number five, you need patience. Number six, you need doggedness. And number seven, you need the drive to go out. We are going to pray that God will give us the grace to arise and go. You need the grace of God to arise and go out. To go out, to go out. And the Lord will go with you. And number two, you need the courage. Oh God, put courage in me. That I will be courageous enough to be able to go and face, confront. These people that have gone out, they have gone back into the world. And there are people that are dissuading them. There are people that are persuading them. There are people that are speaking to them in one way or the other. But then by the grace of God, you have this courage. You will go. And you will go in the midst of all those people that are discouraging them. You will be a source of courage to them. You need wisdom. We just don't go out. You have to go out in wisdom. God. Who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in places, doing wonders, hallelujah, yeah, with life unto thee, oh Lord, with life unto thee, oh Lord. Among the gods, who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in places, doing wonders, hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Our mighty Father, we glorify your name. We thank you, Lord, because of today. We thank you, Lord, because of this evening. Father, we thank you, Lord, because of what you are doing in our life. We thank you, Lord, because of what you will still continue to do. Father, out of nothing, we have come before you today. We pray by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ, you will bless us before we leave this place in Jesus' name. We declare this program as his full name by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ. More than our expectation, you will speak to us in Jesus' name. And by the time we shall live here, O oh Lord, we pray we shall not be the same in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, because you are the Lord that answer prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's say amen. We have been in the church for so long that we should know that when we pray in Jesus' name, 
the next thing is what? Amen. I mean, the church, the amen may let it be so. Let it be so. And God will help us in Jesus' name. We shall open our aim to in one, three, three. In one, three, three. Yeah, give me a program. Program. Just one program. Is that? Thank you. There should be another one somewhere here. Eh? One, three, three. Because of whom you are, what you are, and what you continue to be. Thank you, because of the name of Jesus, that has no limitation. The Bible says that the name of Jesus, every meal shall bow. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege of having that name to conquer all enemies to conquer all that it us, to conquer the powers of darkness and to subdue the demonic gang up against our destiny. Spirit of the living God, as your people pray and as we call upon your name tonight, you will do valiantly in our midst. You will work effectually and mightily and supernaturally. Visit every life, O oh God. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. Use your ministers. Use as many, O oh God, that you'll be using tonight to lead. Let the Spirit of the Lord descend heavily upon us. The Bible says, it shall come to pass that I will fall upon the house of David and the habitant of Israel, the Spirit of grace and supplication. Let it be so tonight, O oh God. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. At this time, we want to begin to give thanks unto the Lord. We want to worship. We want to praise. We want to honor. We want to glorify His holy name. The Bible says, giving thanks unto the Father, who had made us to be partakers of the inheritance in light, who have delivered us from the powers of darkness and have translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Obviously, we have been translated from the powers of darkness into the marvelous light of the Lord. We want to bow and bend before the triumph deity. We want to worship him. I want to exalt and glorify his holy name because he is God. Taloda bire Jesus, Taloda bire Alagbara, Obato da Ombobo, Obato da Emienio, Obati Oda, everything. We want to give thanks to him. He is the vision of the day, the lion of the tribe of Judah the bright and the morning star, the one that have never lost the battle, the one that have always been a victor, the one that have always been with us, the one that has stood by us since we came to this world, the one that have always stood by us, that's our God, that's our defender, that's our triumph deity, that's our mighty and powerful God. That's the one who have been from time immemorial, worshiping, glorifying, honoring, praising, elevating. Pastor Ali is here now. So over to Pastor Ali. Thank you, sir. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you so okay. much. Pastor Yomi, the Lord is your strength. Shall we pray okay. together? Our Father, we thank you because you are our Father. We bless your name because of your power and your love that will never fail. We thank you because you are a faithful God. As we come tonight, we are yes, asking Father. that your mighty power you will release upon our Amen. life, even tonight, in Jesus' name. Amen. 
I pray that the Spirit of God Amen. will be by your mighty power. Visit <laughs> us and give us fresh understanding. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Without going to much preambles, you see, as I have said in the uh, publicity already, that tonight prayer, that if we, if we pray according to the will of God, there's a lot of things that God will do in our life. Do you know that some people will not prosper until whatever is leaking them to the sun, to the moon, to the star, is being broken in pieces. I will explain. Sometimes in life, do you know that life has different level. Deliverance has level. Prophet has level. Prayer to also have level. And there are different kinds of problems and different form of wickedness. All these things have level. In Psalm 2, as we look, the oppression of the dark kingdom show that demons are really as boy or servants comparing to the power mentioned in Psalm 2. When we began to confront, confront the kind of power discussed in Psalm 2, from 1 to 3, who said, why do the hidden rage and the people imagine vain things? And the king of the earth said to himself, himself and, the, and the ruler to take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, let us break them in bounds and cast their gold from all. When you began to challenge this kind of power, hmm, that are very, very important that you should take note that such person is facing a serious, serious issue. The truth is that as far as there is the sun, the moon, and the star in the sky, some people will not prosper. Listen to me very well. Until whatever is leaking them to those elements of nature, is being broken. Wicked men have their draw their power from six socks. Number one, water. Number two, health. Number three, familiar spirits, witchcraft spirits, and the elements as well. Okay. Now, do you understand that the most wicked men are those who are able to control the triangular power? When such men are after a person's life, you know that it is a serious matter. The psalmist, who is an expert in the school of warfare, he said, the sun will not smite you by day, nor the moon by night. Meaning that both the sun and the moon have power to smite. Blessing of the night and destruction at moon day are controlled by the sun. By the moon and as well, each person has a star attached to his life. Immediately, Jesus was born. Some people were able to locate his star mm -hmm. in the heavens and trace it to where he was born. A person become useless if his star is struck down and hold by the enemy. He will not be able to locate his star. And we are uh, just possible. Mm -hmm. His destiny, his destiny will be we just lie waste. It is a terrible thing. That is why God asks Job in Job chapter 38, verse 12, and verse 13. Job, God was asking Job a question there. He said, As thou commanded the morning since thy days, and caused the day star to know its place that it may take hold of the ends of the earth, that it may shake the wicked out of the way. When Joseph starts talking about his dream, he said, I saw a star by them. Immediately, his brethren understood it. They knew that the star which the boys speak referred to represent their destiny. 
And that star bound down to Joseph. Paul means that the star of a person can bow down. And the brethren and the brother did not like what he was saying. The enemy can also make the star of a person to bow down. And anywhere the person is, no matter how intelligent, no matter how knowledgeable, he will be, he will not prosper. He will not. Another thing again, you, you, need, you need to know is that stars have mouth, satanic prophets, consult stars to pick up information about people. Listen to me very well. Satanic prophet, they consult stars to, to speak up, to speak up information about people. If they want to know about a person, they will call the person star and find out. There are people like that in the kingdom of darkness. They use that to trace. And some of us, some also use mirror. Those, some use water, some use mirror. They will consult the spirit water and then that spirit water will not actually tell the abalists and the evil men about people's stars and their glory and their destiny. Why do people go to them to seek to seek for help? They go to the house of abalists and they say that uh, they want to transfer people's glory upon one another. Those are evil people. And those are what they are doing today. And that is why you need to pray to dismantle all this demonic and satanic power that is operating, that is working upon the life of men. You know something? It may shock you. Somebody gets married. When he got married, the mother-in-law came and told the wife that you are the second wife, I am the first wife. And the sister said, God forbid, they reject it. And the man said, you reject what? You better believe what I'm telling you. The mother-in-law visited that family to greet the son. When he, when, he, when he came there, the husband told the wife to leave, to leave the bedroom. The mother-in-law went to the son. As he went to meet the son, the sister said, God forbid. He went inside the air gate to sleep. Three of them sleep in the same bed. You should know that that is a serious problem. That is a triangular power that is contending with that marriage over there. It scatter everything. That is why you must know that there are powers that is consulting stars to attack believers. There are power that is consulting sun to attack believers. There are power that is consulting water to attack believers. There are power that is that, that, that is contacting the moon to attack believers. And the psalmist said, the sun shall not smite you by day, nor the moon by night. You are going to pray, whatever program they are program your life, into the sun, into the sky, into the moon, into the water, whatever evil mirror they are using to monitor your life, you will pray tonight. The power of God will break everything out of your life in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. The power of God will break everything out of your life tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Because, because, because God will want a word in your days. And all what they are using to manipulate your glory. I have a brother as well. Those of you in Lagos, you may not bother Johnny Todo. Before he became pretty popular, he was before he came to the Lord, he was actually uh, doing very well in Nigeria here, yeah, work with one of the top companies here yeah, in Nigeria here. Yeah. And then when he became a big man over there in the world before he met Christ, a man took him, said, Come on, God, let's go to somewhere else to go and do, go and do charm for protection so that this position that you are. That nobody will take it from your hand. He said they went to Edo State and they went to go and meet one abalis in the thick forest. Those days, I'm talking about in those days of 70s and 70s, uh, early 70s and late, uh, early seven, uh, uh, late 70s and early, 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 um, 
uh, 80s. They went there to go and meet one Nabalis man. The man took them to the bush. The man said they should call me the afternoon time. They went there. The man took them to the, to the bush. He said they should look up. They should look at the sun. Ah, he said they cannot look at the sun. No. Ah, he said that the charm they want to do now, they will program things in that charm and place it on the sun. Ah, he was telling me. He was telling him. He was, he was the one telling me that they will place that thing. They will put it on the sun. That's no power, no body on earth. As far as the sun light upon the earth, yeah, no body and no power on earth will take that position away from you. That is powers. They will program things. That is why the, the psalmist said that the souls are not smite you by day. They will program things that we put it in the sun, and then the moment you enter the sun, you, you come out like this. When the sun lights upon you like this, my brother, if you are not very strong, the person is gone already. Those are evil, demonic blood of darkness. They scatter people's life. They program people's marriage. They put it in the water. They put it on the air. They put it on the sun. Wherever they are, the sun will not smite you by day. Every evil program of the enemy in your life, the Lord God Almighty will frustrate them in Jesus' name. Amen.